Hello, my name is Oliver Johnson. I work for the Stockholm Environment Institute, SEI, based at our uh, Africa Centre in Nairobi. And I'm here in Kigali uh, for a one-week training that we are doing on WEEP and LEAP, water and energy uh, modelling, uh, scenario modelling tools, which we are using in a project um, with our partners, Arcos, uh, a project funded by Fornerwa, uh, Rwanda's Green Fund, looking at the water energy food nexus in Rwanda. Yeah, so WEEP and LEAP are, um, WEEP stands for the Water uh, Evaluation and Planning Software Tool. Um, and LEAP stands for the Long Range Energy Alternatives Planning Tool. So these are two um, computer-based software modeling tools which allow you to model uh, the energy system and the water and agricultural system um, and then look at scenarios, so future, potential futures like and, 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 and what if um, population grows and demand for water or demand for energy continues to expand. Uh, what if we uh, increase the, the um, amount of biogas in the system? How will that help to reduce dependence on, on firewood or charcoal for, for cooking? So these tools are really useful to explore potential scenarios of the future um, and, and then use that to, to sort of have a dialogue on, on what needs to be done, what actions need to be taken at the policy level um, and interventions uh, that can, can improve development processes and uh, do so in a way that manages uh, natural resources and, and ensures that, that we minimize the conflict over competing resources. A good example is you may want hydropower, you may want water for hydropower production in your energy system, but you may also want water for irrigation to improve your agriculture. Then you have a decision over, if you only have a limited amount of water, where should it go? Who should, should it go for hydropower? Should it go for irrigation? And using these modeling tools, we can sort of look into the future 10, 15, 20, 30 years to see where some of these conflicts might lie and that can stimulate a discussion on how to manage these resources in the future to avoid those conflicts and try and uh, achieve a more sustainable and equitable development uh, pathway. Sure, well th this project sort of has two, two elements. On the one hand, um, Arcos is leading work at a community level to really uh, look at um, how communities can, can, can develop um, enterprises based around natural resources that, that really uh, help them to, 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 to develop, but in a sustainable manner. And on the other hand, we're, we're doing this more national level modeling, scenario modeling work to look at the water energy food nexus, the interactions between the water energy food sectors and, and looking into the future and how that, that those interactions will change and how they may shape and constrain growth. Um, and so we're using WEEP and LEAP which are, are software tools developed by SEI but we don't want to do all that work within SEI. We, want, we, are, we are trying to do it in a participatory way with, with members of different organizations in, in, in Rwanda who not only uh, have the expertise and the knowledge on, on the key energy issues, agriculture, food, water issues in the country, but they also have to do planning to, to plan for the future within these sectors. So hopefully the training that we've been doing on these tools can equip them with, uh, with, with, 
with a set of tools that they could use in their own work and and we hope that that will that will happen and that uh, these tools perhaps uh, could be used in the future to support the the, uh, the planning for vision 2050 or the EPDRS the the national planning processes um, so we've been training members from uh, the Ministry of Infrastructure the, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture the water supply company uh, the electricity uh, supply company and, and, and others uh, the Rwanda Natural Resources uh, Authority as well, so that they so that they can understand, use these tools, uh, support the project, but also hopefully use them uh, outside of the project as well. I think you'll find that there are some people who who. who uh, really like the tools, really adopt them, really understand them, others who struggle and and the training is, we're doing the training so that those who want to continue to use the tool will be able to, but even those who might not use it will be able to understand it and they'll be understand, able to understand other scenario tools, maybe not our ones but other ones, so that if they're involved in a process they, 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 they feel comfortable with those processes uh, using other tools as well. Um, our hope is that it will be used beyond the scope of this project and I think there's opportunity to do so. Uh, we will continue to engage in the lifetime of this project with those trainees who have trained up and, and uh, but also there's a both both tools, WEEP and LEAP, have a very big global online community that, that, it's, that they can uh, tap into as they continue to use these tools they may want to uh, post on the forums asking questions on how to do certain things um, and, and there's a big opportunity to do that. An example might be if um, the LEAP tool uh, for energy planning was used to help Rwanda develop its INDC. It's been used in other countries to do so because it can uh, help you understand the greenhouse gas emissions from different energy development trajectories. and. There, if, if if that tool is used, then there is a you know a community out there who can help uh, give advice on how it might have been used elsewhere. So I think these tools are being used around the world in hundreds, you know, in many many countries, and uh, for different activities. And so I think there's a big opportunity beyond this project to to use those tools. Of course, it's uh, you know there's lots of demands on time to do lots of different things. Uh, so it's about, as we mentioned in the training, not thinking about these tools as an additional workload, but how can you use these tools to help you do the work you're already doing in your role. I think Rwanda government, the Rwandan government, like a number of other governments in, in Africa, has some really ambitious uh, development plans. and. Uh, Rwanda particularly has, has a kind of green growth agenda within those development plans, which is fantastic. But achieving that and implementing that and achieving it can, can, be, can be challenging. And, and what we're using these tools to explore is how might there be trade-offs in the development plans and using the tools to, to start a dialogue of how to deal with them. So my 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 request would be that for, for, for the Rwandan government and others to, to use uh, the, the kind of evidence that's coming out from these tools um, to help inform a process, a dialogue, whereby we, we, we discuss future development pathways. How do we achieve these broad, these broad and uh, ambitious visions? Um, and of course, these scenario tools are not reality, they're, they're projections into the future. We have to remember that. We don't know what will happen, but they can help us to think about best case, worst case scenarios, so we, so we are not shocked and so we're not too surprised that uh, if certain things happen because we have started to think about the future. And hopefully these tools can be, uh, create a space for dialogue. That's 
for me, the most interesting thing is when not the modeling bits, but after the modeling, people coming together from energy sector to talk to the people in the water sector, the people in agriculture and natural resources, all coming together and talking to each other. And sometimes they haven't done that before or they don't do it very often. And so I, I'd like to see that more happening more often. And, uh, you know, uh, I hope that this project and, and the training and all the processes within it can help support uh, the development uh, within Rwanda. That's, that's uh, my hope for the future.